Coach, I know you, you, you've coached in, in, in a lot of different leagues, been around the country. First time for the SEC. Just, I know you've been kind of up here, but what's your impression of just the league, the, the talent, the coaching, the, you know, the level of play here? Yeah, um, you know, I, I would say from, you know, I've been in, man, I've been in the ACC. I was in the uh, Pac-12. I've been in the, in the Big East as well. And, I mean, th this year in the, in the SEC has been as good as any that I've ever been a part of. Um, when you talk about the, you know, first off, the coaches, um, there's some high level, um, highly respected uh, coaches in this league, guys that do a really good job. Um, the talent, you know, is high end talent. Um, you know, the, the, the style of play, the physicality, all, all of that make this league really, really special. And, and, you know, one of the best leagues, if not the best league uh, in, in all of college basketball. When you guys watch the Arkansas tape, are you more encouraged by what you're able to do in the first half or more worried about what you weren't able to do in the second half? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I obviously, you know, I, I felt like for probably about 32 minutes of that game, uh, man, we, we played at a, you know, at a, at a really high level. And, you know, that last eight minutes, for whatever reason, um, and again, you, you credit to Arkansas. I mean, they, they kept competing. They kept, you know, they kept fighting. Um, I think we did give them some opportunities with, with some turnovers, uh, but they kept coming. That's a good basketball team. And, and, and you know, arguably you know, one of the best in the league. And so we knew they weren't going to roll over. We knew they weren't going to stop fighting. Um, but, yeah, we were very encouraged by, I would say, 32 minutes of that game. And, and with the last eight, we, we saw some areas and were able to get some good film of hey, where we need to be better and where we need to improve. Coach Byron was talking the other day about how important it is for a team to know what goes into winning, but also what goes into losing. What's the line between talking about both sides of that and, and coaching that in the players? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think, um, and, and Coach is absolutely right on that, um, there is a fine line. And I think with our group, though, uh, we have a, a mature, older group of guys that can balance both sides of that coin. And so um, w w with our group, we don't feel any type of hesitation about talking about both sides of it because of the strong leadership we have um, for the guys that have been in the fire and, and been through the battles. And, and they know, you know, they know like it's, it's real because I, I think with, with, with these guys, I mean, you got to be 100% real with them, you know, because they see through the fake. The, the, I mean, we, we're dealing with some smart young men. And, you know, it's not like back when I played when, you know, whatever coach said, I ran with. You know, now guys can look stuff up. And, you know, if I tell them, you know, this guy is a dead-eye shooter and he's only shooting 20% from three, like they, they're going to go look at the clips and they're going to, you know, they're going to do their own research. And so I, I think being completely honest with them and, and talking about both sides is, is key. And you got to trust that you have a mature enough group, which we do, to be able to handle um, handle it and, and absorb it and, and take it in um, and, and you know be able to execute the game plan and, and do what's needed to be done to, to not only win the game but also um, to, to become a better team and to continue to improve each each game and each time out. Reese and Jimmy. Obviously everything gets condensed now. How challenging does the scout report, scout report get when you don't know exactly who your opponent is and everything is one day at a time? Yeah. Um, you know, th those are the, th th that's what, you know, you say those uh, early season tournaments kind of prepare you for, you know, it prepares the team and also the coaching staff on, um, on you know, really what, what we need to really focus in on and, and which points are, are really important. And so um, with this condensed schedule, with that tournament style feel, um, SEC tournament will be a little different because, you know, we're playing guys we've already played before and teams that we watch on a regular. I think as you look, look, look ahead to the NCAA tournament, it gets a little different because hey, these are teams might not even be in the same region that you're coming from. And, and, uh, and, and so scouting gets a little different, gets a little, a little tricky. But I, I, we have a great staff. We have a, a big staff. And so we have an all-hands-on-deck mentality. And, and we'll have everybody from our managers to GAs, um, you know, whether it's gathering stats, whether it's looking at film, whether it's – all those guys would be able to uh, have some input and, and, and help 
us uh, prepare a presentation for the guys that um, one that makes sense to them is not too much information and and one that's um, you know that that go gets directly to the point on what's important and as far as you know trying to trying to get a victory but I would say for the SEC tournament it's, it is I mean it's, it'll be tricky but we're, we're facing teams we're all familiar with and everybody's familiar with each other coach the uh, against Arkansas the first half Tennessee had a 19-13 rebound in its second half, Arkansas 24-14. What was the difference on tape? What did you see as the difference in the rebounding? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think for Arkansas, it started that last four minutes of the game when they brought in uh, Kamani um, Johnson, I think was his name, number 20. And I felt like he came in with a, a, a certain um, – energy level a, a certain level of activity and you know to end that half we didn't get a body on him for whatever reason and I think that gave him confidence going into the second half and his role kind of increased that second half and his activity continued and then I think Wade kind of chipped in and then they, you know some long rebounds came out and so um, you know I, I would attribute it to um, you know us not boxing out really you know uh, us not boxing out and then in some search circumstances uh, not pursuing the ball and you know we, we that's something we harp on you know we talk a lot about uh, rebounding the basketball and, and so um, he's different because he is smaller but he's you know a lot more slippery and, and he, he's really active and you know we didn't do a good job of, of hitting him. Ryan then Ethan. Where are you seeing Jonas grow the most since getting here and what kind of the next step for him? Um, you know, I, I think with Jonas, the biggest growth has come with uh, physically, with his body. You know, he's a kid that wasn't highly recruited in high school, had a prep year, and saw his whole recruitment change. Um, up until he got here in the summer, had never consistently competed against anybody his size. And that was new to him. Our strength and conditioning program was like, totally new to him and uh, you know having to play in the paint for long stretches was new because he, he's kind of a hybrid stretch five type of guy so you know all of that with his frame you know he came in um, I want to say he was around like 200 205 uh, maybe, maybe maybe a little heavier than that maybe 215 but anyway he, he, he was lighter and so there's a lot of things happening with his body and and so the biggest adjustment I've seen is from a physical standpoint, um, he's gotten himself in a lot better shape and he's a lot stronger, you know, and he, and he had a stretch early on where he was taking strides and then he, you know, got sick and had uh, a knee issue and, and all that stuff and it kind of set him back. And right now, I, I think we're seeing a kid that, you know, he's adjusted to the college game and he's, 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 he's put on some weight and he understands how physical the game is and, and he's, you know, making that adjustment. And, I don't think he's anywhere near where he will end up. You know, I think he's got a lot of growth, but um, and so he's just scratching the surface. But he, he's a willing learner, and uh, he works he works really hard. And so it's exciting. You know, it's really exciting to see because he brings a different dynamic um, to our defense, especially. Yeah, you mentioned the older guys earlier. How do you think the young guys will fare going into an environment that never really has been in? As far as the tournament goes, yeah. Um, you know, you, 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 you never know, right? You never know because um, this is their first SEC tournament. You would hope that uh, the Mohegan Sun event kind of gave them a little feel of what it feels like to play back-to-back -back games. And um, in, in this situation, we're hoping to go back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. And uh, But that's what we rely on the older guys to talk to them. And, you know, we'll prepare them as much as, as we can. And, and, you know, Coach Barnes have, will have a – a, um, a, a, a you know a, a plan in place um, to to make sure everybody is prepared and, and you know through conversations and practice and video um, I think they'll understand the magnitude of it but it's totally different when you step foot on that court and you know and, and so that's when again with our older guys they'll be able to lean on them and 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 they're, they're good players you know like it won't take long for them to say okay yeah, this is a normal game now you know and so um, but up until that point we'll do everything we can to to prepare them for it and, and to make sure um, 
you know, we've, we've talked them through it and they kind of understand what, what's, what's at stake here and what's going on. Go Mike, Jack, and Rob. Uh, Rick has talked a lot about Kennedy having a really long wingspan. How have you seen him learn to use that throughout the season defensively? And how does that impact what opponents are able to do offensively at the top? Yeah, no, he does. He, um, you know, he, he has a really long wingspan. And I would say he uses it to impact the defense. I mean, he, he can take certain, um, you know, certain risk, I would say, reaching uh, hands in passing lanes. Um, I know earlier in the season he was getting, like, blocks from behind. Um, you know, all of those things in, impact our defense. And, and you know, for him, we, we like to pressure the ball. Because of his length, he doesn't have to be as close to pressure the ball because, you know, he's got a, a active hands and he's long. And, you know, I think it makes it tougher for, you know, guys to go by him. And, and he's able to keep guys in front of him a little bit better. But, no, it, it does help. And having him at the head of your defense – uh, being able to disrupt and be disruptive uh, and, 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 and make entry passes tough and initiate an offense tough is always a good thing. Talked about the growth of Jonas. What about Brandon? What have you seen from him as the season has progressed? Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a, a, a fun process with him as well, you know, because um, I would say from a physical standpoint for him, he probably wasn't, and you'd ask him, in the best shape that – you know, he prob probably could have been in. And I, I don't know if the college game was, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know if he thought it would be as hard as it is, you know, and not just the games, but just the day-to-day -day grind of what it takes to be really good. And, you know, he, um, you know, he continues to work. And the thing I love about Brandon is he wants to be great. He wants to be great and um, he's gonna work and, and absorb everything you say to him and then try to do it, you know, and try to execute it. And so, um, you know, for him, I think what we're seeing now is his the work that he's put in from the beginning. And it's finally getting to the point where it's, he, it's, it's all coming together for him. And, and you know, th there are some things where, you know, he needs to be, be better, as all of us do. But uh, I've seen the biggest growth for him in his intensity level and his, his concentration on preparation. Uh, for games and, and, and how serious he takes scout reports, you know, like I would say early on He wouldn't be as serious as he as he is now you see him now. He's asking questions to the scouting coach about um, You know whoever he's guarding going left going right. What does he like to do when he gets here? And, and, and what are some things I need to watch out for and those are all things that um, you know mature players and, and guys that start to figure it out those, those are questions they start to ask him and so it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's fun to see uh, his, his progress. Coach, you guys finished second a really good read. And you're probably going to be at least a three seed in the tournament. And you've done it all with two freshmen being your primary point guards. Right. You played this position at a high level. Just how unique is that? How, you know, how much do those guys have on their shoulders as first year players? Yeah, it's a lot. It, 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 it's a lot. And, you know, I, I, um, I can sympathize with them, I guess, you know, sympathize. But I, I, I can uh, relate to them because of, you know, I, I, my path was similar, you know. And um, I think like them, I had older guys to help me. And, you know, I, I think Kennedy and Zakai would be the first to tell you they wouldn't have had the success they've had without the help of Santi, without the help of Josiah, without the help of VJ those older guys around them, kind of just coaching them up, helping them through, and you know, taking some pressure off of them at times. But both of those two, those two guys, Akai and Kenny, those guys are talented. They're, they're really talented young men, um, and, and, and they possess some elite skills from a basketball standpoint, but they have a, um, a resolve, a, a confidence, a toughness about them that allows them th to be able to thrive, compete and thrive in this SEC. Because there's been plenty of nights, both guys, like, you know, hasn't gotten the best out of their matchup, right? And, and they don't hang their head. They don't question whether they're good enough. They just keep working and keep working and, um, you know, and, and rely on, on coach and coaches and, and, the, and, the, um, and their teammates to kind of help guide them through. But, both of those guys are, are super talented um, 
and and that with the assistance of the older guys has allowed them I think to 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 do what they do and and um, and, and run the point guard position for our team uh, at a high level. Finish up with Grant. I don't know if you heard this or not, but Jordan Danny was named the Big South Freshman of the Year. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> what were your thoughts reaction to hearing that news? What did you think about? Oh, it was the awesome. Year had? Yeah, it was it was awesome. You know, it it was awesome, and um, you know, a, as a dad, as his former trainer, workout guy, or whatever you wanted to, you know, it's, you know, it, it, it was it was great to see, you know, and uh, um, I know he was excited about it, but I think I might have been the most excited um, just to kind of see his progress through the year, and, and not only that, but just kind of where he came from, you know, and, and how it all started, where, um, you know, he's leaving high school, and didn't have a Division One offer, and and him believing in himself and not wanting to walk on wherever I went to school. He said, "Dad, I want to play," you know. And so he went to prep school and had a, a a great prep season. But it was COVID, and you know nobody really got to see him other than video. And then Upstate took a chance on him, and just to kind of see that whole progression, um, it makes me proud of him and, and his resolve and, and his toughness and I mean, just love for the game and and. Um, you know, I, I, I just, it makes me feel good. You know, it, it does. It really does. You still watch every one of his games? I do. I, I do. A after, you know, a after, you know, finish our tape and all of that, I'll pop his games in and, and check it out. And um, I try to be dad and not coach and, you know, kind of hit him on the mental side of things. But if he, if, when he asks me a question, I'm ready to kind of give him my input on it. That's for sure. <laughs> awesome, Coach. Thank you very much. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah.